Morning. I'm Toby Hodges. This might just be my ultimate boat. We're on board the HMAR 52. for the early start is that we are heading from La Grande Motte to a peninsula called the Cadaqués, which is basically between halfway between there and Barcelona. And yeah, the wind is due to die this afternoon, so we wanted to make the most of it, get the, the best conditions here, and already it's exceeded the forecast because we've got 20 knots. So it's a pretty stunning morning to be out here. And uh, not bad given this boat was only splashed a couple of weeks ago. It's been out twice for a couple of sail trials. And this is first proper outing. So let's go and see sunrise from up on deck. Matthew here and Edouard from Outremer. Let's go and see the sunrise. And we've got my friend Loic on the helm. That's why we're going so fast. And it's a pretty rare opportunity here. So we've got the 55 there with the photographer Robin Crystal on it get the first photo shoot of this boat and what a cracking morning for it 20 knots following breeze and we are ripping along sitting at around 11 to 13 and a half knots. Here's why this is such an amazing opportunity here. Not just to have this time on the boat, but Two boats sailing with the new 55 as well in front of us and the photographers on there. And to have these conditions as well, I mean, this is just pretty epic. Could be a good day or two. Anyone who says you can't have fun sailing a cruising boat should come and try sailing an Ultramare 52. In these conditions. 15 knots true. Reaching away, we haven't really dropped less than about 11 knots. When the puff comes, so we've only got 12 knots true at the moment. But when the puffs of sort of 17 knots come on, we're hitting around 15, 16 knots. And it's really fun, sporty sailing as well. A little bit of swell coming with us. I mean, this is how to get places. So we're now sitting at 11 knots, 120 degrees true, 13 knots breeze, and you can just see a puff coming now. 
little bit of a wave and boom, starts to accelerate. Uh, wind goes forward. 12 and a half. 13. 13 and a half. So we needed to head downwind more. So we furled away and dropped that Jenica, the white Jenica, and swapped it now for this A2, which is on a snuffer. And so we're now making a very nice, gentle, sort of seven and a half to nine knots, but at a nice deep angle, 155 degrees true. But yeah, seven, seven and seven half, eight, eight to eight to nine and a half knots. Pretty nice be to go gently downwind sailing in 13 knots true. And I have found my favorite position already. I thought these bench seats here were just for the, when you get the tiller steering part, but to rec this reclining aft bit of it is just a magic place to stand a watch. I'm loving playing with this helm setup, different positions to have the wheel, different positions to steer from. At the moment, I wanted to be in the sun, so I'm out on the side, side helm seat here. Got the swing pedestal canted right out, so I can sit in the sun here, enjoy the conditions. We were sailing uh, with, the, with the Genoa because the wind came right round from a more southerly direction uh, but we figured we could hold this angle with the Genica and it's pretty nice really because uh, you can see we've got it pinned in quite tight but we're sailing at about 110 true so about 65 apparent in 12 knots of wind making about nine and a half to ten knots but really fun sporty sailing as well you can feel it you can heat it up a bit get the speed back into double figures bear away again we're off to this headland in the distance on the starboard side there oh it's just magic sailing classic med sailing as well you know only just double figure wind speeds but to have a big cat like this, you can really enjoy them. Great stuff. It's half past two now, still day one. Nice, long, lovely, long sailing day. So 10 hours into it. And we've got about another 20 miles or so to that peninsula that we're going to. And it's still, still lovely sailing. We've just had some lunch, including some incredible chocolate cake and cheesecake together in the saloon and now just still deep reaching here under this Jenica and full main setup making about nine to ten knots in 12 knots breeze not bad Look how much natural light comes in here. It is, really is incredible. So you may, may notice the engine is now on. We just got headed a bit, coming towards this headland here. So still got the main up and just motor sailing around this point. We'll get through between here and that rock. So you, you see we've come across the Bay de Leon. Got to this headland here. Uh, and I'll show you on the chart here. So this is the Cadaqués area and we're just coming around this headland here. And we are gonna, that's our scheduled anchorage in that nice shallow blue protected area once around this headland. So just drop the main and pulling in towards the anchorage half past four so pretty much exactly 12 hours after leaving this morning covered just about almost 100, 100 miles including some light patches but all sailing and there's the 55 
just got in ahead of us just there. <laughs> Looks like a pretty beautiful, tranquil, enclosed cove to spend the night. catching up with the French plan, but I don't think we're here for the night. It's a pretty nice photo spot though. But yeah, maybe a little close <laughs> to the rocks for the night. The sports boat becomes the relaxing party pad opened out for full sunshine pleasure. perhaps why I like multi-hull sailing so much. Particularly on a sporty cat like this, where you can have a really lovely, long, fun day out sailing, really active, engaging sailing. And then you get to come and anchor in a cove like this, drop the hook in two meters of water, away from everyone else, and then you have the space. It's the luxury of space it gives you. So you can have your own relaxation area, whether it's here on the aft deck, in the saloon, in your cabins or in your hull, whatever it be, or you have the space to socialize, to go paddle boarding, to go swimming and to host friends in real comfort. So, what, eight of us on board. And enjoy your surroundings. Bye, lovely cove. Off to find our nighttime anchorage now. Our spot for tonight, Cadaquesque, just on the Spanish side of the Spanish French border. He's picking up a boy. Got it to ourselves. So, my impression so far of, it, of this interior main living space is it's the They've really thought hard about how people will use these areas and given over those spaces proportionately for that. What I mean by that is you have a compact saloon because you have a big aft cockpit area. That's where people will socialize and eat meals and things. In here, you know, you've got more of a breakfast bar set up, perfect for a family uh, having breakfast, family of four having breakfast or whatever. This table obviously raises up, drops down, fills in as a bed. The real crowning piece really is this central nav station area and the big desk there. I mean, what a great place to sit and stand a watch with those perfect views looking out forward, big desk area, really comfortable swivel chair here. Turn, look around, you're in comms with a person on the helm. And uh, yeah, look at that great screen with all your, your instruments to hand, big lift top table, plenty of work surface or desk area if you are home working as well. And yeah, just I think is a brilliant, brilliant player. And you know, the, it, it's straight gl glass, well, it's tempered, um, polycarbonate, sorry, 
windows work really well because it's flat screen so you're not getting the glare coming in you've got opening ports in th four opening parts of that to give through ventilation through here straight glass either side as well so you've got near surround and I say near surround because those two corner cabinets they had to fight with Frank Darnay to have in so you get that extra stowage space that's the only bit you don't have that visibility but you've got loads absolutely loads of it um, and again like you say perhaps a little compromise might be the galley area in terms of stowage space but there is stowage throughout the boat so that is perhaps made up for so there is a 130 litres fridge as standard there you can opt to have an extra freezer space as well so that's drawer freezers in there to top up that fridge space looking at this this is the main saloon area here on the, on the port side You've got a double bin below with that sweeping part to it there, really useful. And I really like this the other side of this massive single sink. It's having this shoot straight through uh, to the sea there for your vegetable scrapings, compostable stuff, and then good stowage below the sink area there. Really useful for your pots and pans. Cutlery stowage drawer there and this has a combi microwave oven below and a combination of induction heating and induction hobs and gas hobs. Point being gas is a standard but um, yeah, with over 2000 watts of solar you're, you've got plenty of juice uh, to use induction and this one has upgraded lithium ion batteries. It's got two got 6,000 watts of uh, lithium ion batteries, I believe, I'll check that, um, over the standard AGM. So it has got plenty to use the induction, but if you do run low on solar um, or regenerate, you know, if it's cloudy for a while, you're at anchor, then having uh, the gas back up could be handy. And then you've got that outdoor shelving space. And the shelves there for your teas and coffees etc and really nice little living garden area as well and no those badass chocolate and cheesecakes don't come with the boat homemade by Matthew himself and another bit of outboard storage there for your pastas and rices and stuff oh we see how that can open there to slide open there or of course this one slides open, the whole lot shifts across to really open it out. Let our outdoor crew Moving members down in. to starboard. You have this really useful locker area that's going to be your pantry, basically. Your daily um, dried goods use in there. Really valuable space indeed. Uh, plus an extra cupboard up above that as well. And then if you choose the owner's layout, so an owner's hull, this is what you get. Plenty of space. Obviously some owner is gonna think, well, I don't need all of that space going forward. You know, split this into two cabins uh, and, and make use of that extra my free space, the work room, utility room on the port forward side. However, in this layout, especially for liverboards, um, plenty of space and the stowage space is used really well so when that sliding door is closed off it reveals this wardrobe and shelves above it a um, couple of things I really like uh, the amount of natural light these huge hull windows uh, they really do you, you lie in these beds and you look out through that and it's I know a lot of big cats do it but to do it well it's something you really appreciate having it's a big double bed. It's not a peninsula or an island style, but it's plenty big enough, even with this inboard storage space, which I think is really useful to have your books and gadgets and bottles of water and that sort of thing, and uh, extra inboard space there as well. And storage space is used and given to you wherever possible. Uh, so the first meter or so below this berth is all storage space. Uh, 
and again below that as well in the bilge there so that is a very very spacious air indeed uh, hide suitcases bags boots anything you like and again deep and then you've got a, at least a foot of bilge space there and further forward with a tray in this one as well so really useful spaces to have um, and then obviously you have all these this wardrobe area in the central section opposite the daggerboard housing you also have these movable cases here to put stuff in so where these bars are you can see them by the the headboard of the berth there as well and there's another one forward so you can move them there where you want them again big and all of these big portholes have these lightweight boards that cover them see that one there to cover that they are really nice and lightweight and obviously block out all the light big big shelving and hanging space there as well which as i say will be really valuable for liverboard type owners those going long distance nice lightweight doors sort of alpi finish to this it's it's a light wipe clean finish throughout basically um, it's not high end it's volume production but um, yeah, it's been executed reasonably well and um yeah it's i think it's smart enough it's not luxury but the luxury you get for the seven figure price of this boat comes in the space and the sailing performance that's what you're paying for again up here in this it's a simple spacious bathroom area uh, with loads of stowage lavish use of space really for a bathroom and then you've got a, a separate shower in here wet room area i'm going to take you into the port hull as well while it's relatively tidy and i so here's where it changes here's where it's um what they call my free space area so you can choose to have this as a very adaptable area this one has what I would consider a pretty standard one, having a double cabin, but nice use of space is to split the shower and the heads area so they can be used by both cabins. Nothing rocket science, just practical. And then you have, it's, a, it's, it's quite tight coming through this doorway here, but it helps buy space as well for that shower area and a nice big wardrobe locker really, um, but full height if you are having this double cabin area. Again, massive hole windows, full, almost full length of the cabin there, and a, and, um, a opening hatch above it, and then locker space again. Really good size locker space below the berth itself. Can't see in the dark, sorry. Might try and show that in the light. So then inboard opposite the dagger casing here is the shower. Getting busy here, food time. And a nice big heads area aft here. Generous stowage space aft and below the sink area as well. And there's ventilation out through the inboard side of the hull as well. The escape hatch on this side is in that shower area, whereas on the starboard side, it's on it's below the companionway steps. And then moving aft here, big aft cabin. Again, nice big stowage room there in shelves and a hanging locker area. leaves a big berth, much like the owner's hull really. Nice inboard stowage, I like the reading lights with the USBs fitted in there, power points where you need them, light switches know where you need them, stowage where you need it, good ventilation there and above, and those wonderful hull windows as well.
Regarde comme c'est joli. Encore un peu de lumière dans le ciel, tu vois. Ça part, on voit que les gens ils bouffent à l'intérieur. C'est un truc, c'est des photos qu'on n'utilise jamais en fait. Celle-là, on est très content de faire. C'est ce genre-là, tu vois. And it's good night from Caracas. It is a lovely flow of fresh air. And yeah, the amount of natural light is is fantastic. Plus the shade you've got. I mean, the, the bimini area above that cockpit is superb. This is a little bit odd having the, the hob in the corner. I can see why they've done it. Because if you put it here, you wouldn't have any practical work surface area for preparing food. But it, it kind of works, you wedge yourself in this corner and obviously you're only normally using one or two uh, rings at a time, so getting to the main one's all right. But it's, uh, yeah, relatively compact zone, that one. Do love this. This nav station chart table area with that seat works really well and having horizon views when you're standing anywhere in this saloon. Well, at my height, and I'm 5'10", I guess someone at, uh, a bit taller than me, 6'2", six, six plus probably, might not have, but it's, it's really nice. So we are doing a little photo shoot here off the stunning white painted houses town of Cadaqués, famed for Salvador Dali House and Museum. So we just put the sails up now so the photographer can get some shots with a lovely backdrop. Going through attack, so if you've got the Genoa option, obviously you've got to let off on one winch on this side, take up on the other on this side, but obviously the standard is a self tacking jib. These inboard winches are really good. Furling away undercover, still get full viz through the Saloon windows, obviously. So access to systems was a big goal of the 52 over the 55. So you can see here these forward saloon seats, backing removes, and these panels and that central panel as well. And there you have your batteries, chargers, and the solar charging controller systems as well. So that you see here as well, there would at normal room for an extra battery storage as well if you had three batteries this has two very high powered lithium ion batteries and then further in uh, outboard is all stowage and below that seat as well so all these headlining panels are mounted on fast mount systems uh, so that you can pull them off as we've done here everyone's showing us and they're on these foam stringers essentially so easy to push them back in and to access any wiring up underneath them as well as we scout out our next anchorage going through a lovely little passage here i just want to keep showing you some of the access parts our access was a big feature of this 52 being able to get at all the parts there so behind this big panel here on the nav station you've got access to the wiring behind it and you can also notice in here as well the full carbon compression beam for the compression post for the mast uh, laminated in there as well in both aft cabins there are behind this panel here you see this little groove there so that pulls off and that gives access to the fuse panel for the C-Zone system. 
over there, you've got all your 12 volt fuses in there on the digital switching system. Most of the, of the floorboards you're looking at, um, the doors, cupboard doors, that sort of thing, they're all in foam sandwich, so nice and lightweight. And I like the way there is lots and lots of stowage where you need it. So you can see a bit more than you could at night time, but there's a bulkhead there that's uh, containing the water tanks um, in the, under the aft part of the berth. If you had AC, there'd be a, a compressor that would go under there as well. Um, otherwise, really, it's, it's plumbing under these floorboards. Um, but you will notice, again, you'll no notice the aluminium grid that these sit on, so nice and stiff structure. Uh, and you might be able to see here, it's a foam sandwich that these uh, panels are made out of as well. And they'll fit these with as many of those trays or plastic liners that you want to keep the builders like this, to keep that nice and tidy. And there are your water manifolds for switching different taps. So there you've got the WC, uh, all labeled in English and French, where it's the shower, um, basins, water heater, and hot and water, uh, labeled into red and red and blue, obviously for hot and cold. And yeah, these big trays keep it nice and tidy under there. See the forward ones lift as well. So you still plenty more stowage going forward in those central build sections, all empty as well. They are changing this door, I think, to open it the other way, so it makes access a little bit easier. And if you were having a washing machine, it could go in there. If you're having the five kilo unit, they can get a three kilo unit in the port side. So again, that would depend on how you want to lay it out and whether you're having the three or four cabin option. These shelves here are structure as well, supporting those, the dagger board casing there. Same setup in the porthole as well. The plumbing and manifolds there in the bilges. And just stowage space under those panels. And more back aft as well. And the same fuse box behind that panel. Same amount of stowage under that berth. So as we move through this pretty rocky passage. It's a good time to perhaps show you a bit more up on the foredeck area here. This owner has chosen to go for, as I mentioned, the optional Genoa. Uh, and, that, and he's gone with a stay sail, which you can see the furler of here, uh, with a clutch for the tack line and that can come back to a winch to tighten it there, or you can just have a winch on the windlass itself. Uh, but if you're taking that option, you need a uh, reinforced compression post. So uh, this would standard be a, an aluminium uh, structure all the way through the bowsprit area, uh, and this is uh, carbon reinforced. The bowsprit itself extends uh, 75 centimeters past those, uh, the waterline part of those reverse bows. Uh, so it gives you that extra clearance, and you see the tacks mounted there for the Jenica on there as well on the furler. And I, the, the leads are really nice. I like the way the leads are all brought uh, through the blocks and stanchion bases and kept off the deck cleats are right forward and that's a benefit obviously um, uh, for mooring and having clear access, no fair lead needed, but also if you're setting up for a symmetrical spinnaker, you can put a thimble like that on each of those cleats uh, and tack it to each of the bows. And another option, but a nice one to have here with this bow spray extending like this is having the trampoline forward. So you can be right forward here to, uh, to manage any sail changes. The observant ones probably noticed this black cover in the corner of the tramp. 
and that is for uh, that is guarding the life raft. So you can see the life raft below here. Uh, and I, to be honest, I didn't even notice the black cover before. It just gives it that bit of protection here. And, and then for getting access to it, you've just got a little dog bone there. So you release that, pull this line from that end, get that cover off. And yeah, they had, you know, they had the, on the 55, they had the life raft mounted aft, but on the, the older 41, 45 and 51, it was mounted up here. And by all accounts, it's a system that's worked well for them. Let's have a look in the four peaks now as well. So port side, and this is really you know, a huge benefit, obviously, of a cruise with catamaran, is the amount of space you get in these four peak sail lockers, toy storage, call it what you want. So this side, you can see the crash box below here. Uh, and above is obviously all the fenders inflated, but they deflate and inflate easily. Uh, it's been yeah, nicely, smartly done, well gel coated. Got a really substantial rail on both sides for warps or fenders. This is a nice little feature having that laminated in as well. So that's where you clamp your outboard for your tender on to uh, keep, keep it from banging around. This one has obviously put in an aluminium fortress anchor there as well as a spare anchor. Uh, and yeah, otherwise, a couple of neat touches, 12 volt socket in there, light there and up here as well. Yeah, you essentially get three levels of safety in that um, crash box for forward, but then the floor itself and then watertight bulkhead there. That one's in foam sandwich and it's monolithic from the waterline downwards. But otherwise the whole boat is built in, in foam sandwich. First layer of vinylester and then polyester. When you combine the stowage you get from that port four peak with this starboard one. You can imagine all the toys you want, especially if they're lighter weight. But obviously this one's nicely used as sail locker in that section, but surfboards, wind surface, wing foils, bikes, you name it. Again, neat bar for the uh, extra warps. Just a really nice, useful space to have for lighter weight gear. So just approaching another beautiful anchorage here on the Spanish-French border. Um, we'll get to see this anchor in, in place. You can see the spade anchor here with the chain led back aft to keep the weight aft. And this is the chain locker here on the starboard side. So 75 meters of chain there as stand 12 mil chain as standard and a 50 meter warp on that as well. Um, good storage space here plus the black water tank and then you have a 275 litre diesel tank each side as well. So nice and empty on this port side getting black water tank, diesel tank. Um, that's a plywood base, it's, but it's all laminated in. So I guess if you were having a gen set, it's a good place for it to go. I'm just gonna climb in quickly to show you this. The main three car uh, bulkheads are in carbon. So that's obviously supporting mast base loads uh, and, is a, and the forward end of the coach roof itself. And then there's one, there's another carbon one, full carbon, at the aft end of the coach roof, uh, which takes the sliding door loads, and then the aft beam for the traveller as well is in full carbon. Can't see many 50 plus foot monoholes coming anywhere near this close. Pretty cool spot.
Calaculip on the French Spanish border. We get a good view from here uh, of the hull shapes and what makes this HMR 52 the powerful performance cutter is. I mean, you can probably see from here now just how fine those bows are. So, really narrow hull shape, especially forward and nice high bridge deck clearance as well. So the waves are not gonna be slapping up underneath it. Uh, you've got a bit of a, a blip there on the other side of the cell. So it's, uh, and of course with the chines on the inboard end, the waves deflected nicely as well. And good high freeboard as well. You see Delphine there up, among, up alongside it. It's, yeah, a lot of space. So you've got plenty of headroom in the hulls, but super, super fine shape. And yeah, the whole program is to keep the, the weight out of the boat as much as possible. So it is designed to take a three ton payload. Uh, she would take it over 15 tons, but you really don't want to load it if you want that performance to keep it. So right about here, it, that is shoulder height for me. At five foot ten, and those water lines extended right from the reverse stems all the way to the very transoms there. Nice long water lines, yet minimised wetted surface because they're not too heavy. And the hull designers, VPLP, arguably the most famous multi-hull designers in the world, they took. The learnings from the 55, you know, scale it down for this 52. The whole shape is very similar, same sort of sculpted sections. Visually, aesthetically, it's only that those hull ports are broken into three rather than one, one strip across the 55. But otherwise, yeah, very similar design indeed. Above the port engine room here, you get a little alcove for your shore power, water inlet and a switch over there for the water maker to choose which tank it's going into. And then in the engine bay itself, 50 horsepower Volvo Pentas as standard, although they are gonna switch those to nannies from number eight uh, for better uh, torque and less, for less vibration, I believe. 12 volt desolator water maker mounted up there. And otherwise, starter battery, uh, water pumps mounted on that bulkhead, fuel uh, filter there. And that is the stock coming down from the tube coming down from the tiller steering, which is an option on the support side. And you can see it's linked by a bar. This bar here, which joins um, the starboard main quadrant and the starboard steering side. Uh, they're joined on a track underneath the, uh, the aft cockpit seat on a yeah on the carbon bulkhead there on a Ronstan track. Otherwise, that's just moving that bar linking it aft to the port hand rudder stock and autopilot back there. Perhaps I would move. The water pumps from here maybe over the, onto there because that is the bulkhead where your headboard is each end whether in this port side or in the master cabin so quite loud when you hear that mark when you hear the fresh water being used and starboard side this cam cleat here that's the changeover from when you're switching from the wheel to the tiller steering and obviously a wash down inlet and and uh, switching between a three-way valve between salt water and fresh water there. This is your starboard engine room. So much the same, but no water maker, but a hot water tank on the inboard side. And you can see the Jaffa wire steering here. So that's coming down from there. So down from the wheel, linking via the quadrant. Um, and can you see here, yeah, you see the bar up there that links to the port side steering. Yeah. 
are parting ways with the 55 now, leaving the anchorage. I'm going to head the 100 miles or so northeast back to Grand Mop. And the idea is to head offshore from where we are here on this peninsula. You see Montpellier and Grand Mont up here. The breeze is meant to come in from the south this afternoon, which is why we waited for the afternoon. Um, so we're going to head offshore into the bay more and then hope to catch that. Well, it's predicted to be 15, 20 knots plus. Um, hopefully get some of that this, later this afternoon and make for a, a late night entrance into Grand Mott. We've just been wallowing around motor sailing for three hours. Almost given up on the wind showing up and then here it is out of from nowhere to 15 knots. Swell forecasted it so time to set sails for home. Just getting ready the downwind Jenica. Let's hope we get some good sailing. That's what we're after. Some waves to play in. 15 to 20 knots breeze. Sitting at 10 to 15 knots boat speed. Depends how much we come up. We've got to go downwind a bit, but. This is what it's all about. This is why you buy a lighter weight sportier cat. When you get conditions like this, we've now got between 18 and 20 knots, a two to three meter swell running. And when you can get on these waves and surf them, we're averaging about 12 knots. And then you hit the waves and you hit sort of 15, 16 on the waves and you can stay on the surfs. It is really, really, really good fun. Here comes a big wave. Missed it. Got to concentrate, Toby. The wind is down to 16 at the moment. Just need the wind to fill up a little bit with the wave. Once it gets to about 20 knots of breeze, get just enough power to hop onto the waves and come down with them. See the speedo shoot up. Okay, here's a good wave. 15 knots, 16, 16, eight. <laughs> still on the wave, still on the wave. Can you imagine crossing the Atlantic like this? Unbelievable. What a way to have fun. Oh, where, where do I sign up for one of these? Just had about an hour on the helm of just fun, pure fun. Like you're on a sports boat, really. To be on a, what would you call it? A family condo, an RV and uh, a car, you know, your home, and be able to do these sustained double digit speeds. But not only that, to feel the acceleration you feel when it hits a wave, you feel surfing. It just takes off, it planes with it, and you can steer it on the waves. And it's a 12 and a half ton cruising cat. But uh, it's, yeah, a lot of fun. Direct steering enough to really enjoy it. Oh, yes. I enjoyed that. So the helm setup in general is one of the things I like the most about the boat. It's been really, really well thought out. So having these two winches here, for example, those four clutches are your main sail. So you've got your three bright colored reef lines and then your blue main sheet led to that winch. 
and then you've got your running rigging and the uh, Genoa sheet on this winch. All the winches have nice, neat tail bags, so it's not getting messy. But the thing that's really good is having the ability to cross sheet or lead them inboard as well. So that block there, with that, you can take anything like the main sheet here, for example, or any of those and run it through the block, down through that dog and bone block there, and onto this winch here. Why is that brilliant? Because then you can control, certainly, let's say it was your main sheet, you can control that from in here. You've also got the main sheet that you can lead, the, the other end of it, lead onto the traveller winch there. But they are all inside this enclosed area here. So with the, with the fabric dodgers down and this closed here, you can be helming and in control of your sheets and running rigging from within this protected area. And you still get the views forward here. We just turned the lights on now for effect, but you get the idea. So yeah, you can have your, your Genoa sheet or a reef or whatever it is led down to this powered winch and that's got foot controls for that winch there. And you'll also note how the Spinnaker sheet, well the Jenica sheet in this case the, is the yellow one here and that's been led under here so you just lift that up, lead it through the cheek box blocks, through that and then you can put that around the winch as it is on this side at the moment. So again, you're trimming the sheet from down here and yeah, it, you can easily stick your head out to see the angle of the kite and you, we'll see what it looks like for the, um, for the mainsail as well because when we bring this pedestal inboard you still have the vision up onto the main from this cutout. So coupled with that layout is the helm pedestal itself and when I came onto the boat I was thinking well you know tiller steering that's what that's what the real fun is on an Outremer and the tiller steering is great but I mean you know it's hard work whereas this having the wheel steering is really nice and the combination of that and this backrest behind Edward here is super comfortable to lean against and it's also very cool having the throttle controls right here as well uh, for you know maneuvering under engine brilliant and another thing this is so comfortable I think I mentioned it before but even the owner of the 45 I met today, they've got those bucket seats with the tiller on it, but you come and sit on one of these, stick your feet up here and recline, and it is brilliant. But what I want to show you as well is this, how the pedestal can be canted each, each way and how that makes a difference. So Edward's just going to release it now. If you could show us what it's like. Can you show us outboard as well? Um, to bring the, okay, so that cants all the way outboard as well. So you can come right out, you've seen the view right over this coach roof as it is, but you can sit there and helm. Or, when you want to stand a watch and bring it inboard, you do the same thing and bring it all the way inboard here. Challenging conditions to do it in here. And that means you can still see full main. You can shut, all, sh shut this hatch here, but you've still got clear view of the main. You've got sheets to hand if you want it, and you're looking, obviously, without these lights on, uh, you're looking straight through those windows, and you've got a really pretty good vision and protected. You can imagine with all of these down here, there wouldn't be any breeze in here at all, or any rain, or any cold. And here we are doing 15 knots in 20 knots of breeze with some good waves. It is fantastic. Before coming here, I thought this could be right up there. It was my ultimate cruising boat. Long admired Outremers. And having tested the bigger sister, the 55, a couple of years ago, sort of knew what was in store and that this could offer potentially the same sort of thing in a more manageable package. And it does not disappoint. So yeah, with where money no object, it's got the space, the speed, the fun, the sportiness and the style to Blue Water Cruise for years. Um, in reality, I think for my family and I, I'd probably choose something a bit smaller, 45 perhaps, because they don't need that, this much space. But then with that comes less payload, less average speed, so I could see real attraction in this, people that want to take all their toys with them as well 
don't overload it though because you, you want to be able to do these high average speeds like we were doing today and the fun surfs. Uchimer know this market better than any really. They've sold 100, 101 of the 51 over the years. They calculated a, an equivalent of 2.3 million miles sailed. So that's a lot of feedback that's gone into this. So when Matthew, the sales manager, says he reckons this will be the best seller, I now believe him and I agree with it. I mean, put this in perspective though, this is a 1.23 million euro base boat price. So this boat is 1.55 million euros. Trouble is, even if you've got one and a half million euros to spend on a boat, you can't get one. Utrecht has sold 39 of these. They've got 30 more deposits and they can only build 34 boats a year of, of all their range. So that means if you order one now, you can't get it till the end of 2027. Can you imagine that in any other industry, having that sort of money, not being able to buy that dream house or that car for four years? It's extraordinary. Anyhow, it's not a problem I'll ever have, but I am now seriously envious of those who might have such an issue. It's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed the sailing and the tour. I certainly did. Until next time.